Hello everyone, this is Marcelo with Garage in Texas and in this video I'm gonna share with you my experience at the Nurburgring track. Getting in, in Nurburgring there's several options. If you're coming from abroad and you need a major airport, your best shot like I did is to use Frankfurt. The airport is about two, two and a half hours away from Nürburgring. Uh, if you are in Europe already, there's several options and uh, maybe Cologne is the, the closest uh, major city with an airport you can use, but the track is not far from, from many places, including coming from um, uh, Amsterdam, is not too far, and other places in, in Germany. From the airport, you will need uh, to rent a car to, to get in Nürburgring. And I decided instead of uh, renting a car and then renting a track car, uh, getting there, I decided to go ahead and, and rent an upgraded uh, model. And, and this is what I got, was a, a Mercedes uh, C180 station wagon with the AMG visual package. Uh, it did not add any horsepower. Uh, it's, if I'm not mistaken, this car is a 1.6 liter turbo with 150 horsepower. It's a heavy car and it had the winter tires that also did not help, but it had the AMG mats and that's pro probably add two horsepower. Driving at the Autobahn is always fun. When you see that sign with the three bars, that means there's no speed limit there and you can go as fast as you want, which in my case was not that fast, but it's always fun just to be able to do that. When you're getting close to the track, you start feeling all the vibes and the road goes side by side with, with the track in many, in many places. This is the gas station people use while doing the, the track days and, and riding at the track. Look at this. You're driving on the road and the cars are flying by you at the track right beside you and all the cars around you are cool cars. Drag cars, fast cars, classic cars, it's an incredible vibe and it's even hard to describe. I was driving there, just getting close and getting goosebumps. <laughs> I'm arriving at the roundabout, you see, I mean, it was the classic, neighboring classic weekend and you would encounter all this classic race cars all around the, the city. Driving right here In half a mile, is the way to the Nurburg village. And here we, we pass underneath the, the track. The circuit is on the left side. And this is the, this is Nurburg village. Every building here is a small hotel, a type of B&B, restaurants. I'm gonna talk in more details about this one later on. And you see in the background there, the, the castle, the Nürburgring castle. The hotel I stay is called Rink Inn. And it's a very simple hotel. He had a private uh, bathrooms uh, at the room I stay. I pay around um, 85 euros a night. If you want breakfast, it was another 11 euros. Uh, the hotel had a parking lot. Um, the idea here was just a, a place to crash and, 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 and not um, uh, luxury. Uh, beautiful views from the hotel. 
and it's funny because this smaller hotels in Europe, there's no one working during the weekends. And actually, this one there was no one working there most of the the days uh, as well. Just somebody to come and clean and 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 take care of stuff. So when you arrive, your keys were at an envelope. <laughs> uh, just at, at the door there with instructions. So you, you get your own key, get inside and access your room. So this is by private bathroom was just a shower and a sink. Uh, it was a small room, but okay, comfortable. And uh, the toilet was outside the room and the toilet was uh, shared with other guests. But I was not there to stay inside the, the hotel, so the idea was to hit the track and start having fun. And, and I saw on the way in that uh, the famous Nürburgring curve was, was right on the, on, on the road where, uh, when you access the, the city. So I decided to go back there and uh, start having the experience. And it, it, it's difficult not to notice all the, the cars from, from people in, in there at the, at the parking lots. Uh, as you can see here, a lot of cool cars and special this uh, bay window bus. Yeah, and this is the famous Nürburgring curve. And people go there, it's open, you don't pay anything, the parking lot is free as well. You just go there, bring a lawn chair or a, a towel, put on the floor, bring your own beer and spend hours watching cars passing by. It's, uh, let me tell you, it, it's a lot of fun. People going super fast, uh, cool cars. People going slow, being careful, and a uh, bunch of near misses, and also some accidents, uh, which is not cool to see. But it's it's part of the experience. There's several vendors there. It was a very hot day, so beer is necessary. And here from another angle, there's a lot of trails that you can uh, walk and, and, and uh, find different spots around the, the track. It's a long track, so if you if if uh, doing trails, walking trails, it's your thing, you know. I mean. You can spend hours walking there in the middle of the woods. It's this time of the year. Uh, this is Memorial Weekend, so uh, end of May. It's beautiful. I was lucky to, to find uh, good sunny days every single day. It's, uh, it's a special place. Look at that Mark I Golf track car going as fast as the Porsches. There's a reason why they call this track the Green Hell. Going fast is it's difficult, going slow can be even more difficult. Notice this car that is passing by right now, the second one. This white Opel Cadet. Uh, I think the car was, was going slow and trying to be careful, but sometimes when you when you, uh, you're avoiding fast cars and you cannot uh, uh, use the, the perfect uh, uh, line, it can be really hard and, and that, guy, that guy got involved in, in an accident, uh, he flipped his car, as you can see down there, in front of everyone, you know, there's no worse place you get an accident then then that turn and and, and he did unfortunately and, uh, and if you get involved in a, in an accident that that can be very expensive because you you pay for your car and you pay for all the damage at the track 
So be careful. to the town there and to the circuit uh, I was trying to find a place to eat something to have dinner this is the main street in, 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 right in front of uh, the, the neighboring track the circuit and they have a lot of stuff in there um, stores um, it's a uh, it's like a small shopping mall, cool stuff to do. This is the place that I decided to eat. It's right in front of the, the circuit and if I'm not mistaken, the name is Bitburger. Uh, I had a schnitzel, which is uh, deep fried uh, pork with fries, 15 euro, and a beer. Keep in mind that in Germany, beer, it's not only very good beer, but it's cheaper than, than soda. Uh, so guess what you're going to be drinking during your trip? Now the parking lots. The parking lots are filled with jewels. Look at this Volvo, Lancia. It's a Lancia Monte Carlo. I've never seen this car before. 930. Burgundy SC, beautiful car with a nice interior. I love that interior. I like to have that on mine. Another Lancia, if I'm not mistaken, or a Fiat, a roof Porsche. Very nice to see those cars around. Beautiful car. And this car is interesting. It's a Fiat. Uh, when I had my, when I was selling my Carmen Ghia TC. Many people on Bringer Taylor, they approach me and say, hey, this looks like uh, this Fiat uh, that was also designed by Giugiaro. And I, I can really see the, the, the lines, uh, especially the front end and, and the side, they look like, even though the Fiat is a smaller car. Next morning, I was jet lag, so I woke up quite early, uh, about 5.36 a.m. and decide to go out for a walk and maybe find breakfast. Um, keep in mind that in Nuremberg everything starts at 8, including breakfast. So uh, I end up uh, getting a good walk, going to the castle there. and There's amazing views when you're walking around the town and Every, every single house is a gem and everyone is gearhead and they have decoration, uh, track decoration of their places. The views are just stunning. And uh, this is an, an example here that I want to show of a small hotel slash B&B and then rent cars as well. Great to see a Danish car that is not electric and the owners will have a great sense of humor. <laughs> Very funny. There are several places to have a meal and have a drink around town. 
this is one of the popular ones and it's right in the in the, the main street there uh, the service was terrible the food was great okay I, I cannot lie but uh, they were very busy at the, the night of the 28th Sunday night and I decided to have my my birthday meal there and the owner ended up uh, ripping me and I pay 85 euros for a pizza, a beer, a coke and dessert. So maybe not the best choice. Yeah, continue the tour through town, head into the circuit. I was so lucky this weekend. They were hosting the Nurburgring Classic and uh, the ticket for the, the weekend was 32 euros for two days. I decided just to, to go there and spend uh, Sunday uh, watching the, the cars and, and the races since I arrived uh, Saturday afternoon. But it was t still totally worth it and you'll see why. Great thing about this kind of a classic car weekend is they have all kinds of uh, cars racing and from, from minis and Cinquecentos all the way to Formula One cars, the DTMs, you name it. And they have the entire circuit open so you, you can access the boxes, you can access the paddocks. Uh, when the, they are lining up for, for the race start, you can go on track. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible, such a great experience. So this first race that, that I watch, the class is called Young Timer Trophy and that was the final. There were 48 cars at, at the grid, 48 cars, but not all of them finish, of course. The, the winner was an Opel Cadet C and there was a wide variety of cars, a 69 Camaro, Golf Mark 1, Golf Mark 2, GTIs, Cadet, Cadet E, Cadet B, uh, Ford Escort RS2000, Polos, BMW 2002, Audi 50, uh, Shirokos, Minis, uh, yeah, wide variety, and it was won by uh, an Opel Cadet C, the Camaro came second, uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting to see these cars racing. Well, they had so many cars there, they were using the space, uh, the, the boxes, and behind the boxes, the parking lot there, it was crowded with, uh, with racing cars. A lot of cool stuff like um, this old Fiat. Uh, that's a car that's very popular in Italy, but also in, in, in Brazil. It was produced in Brazil, this car. NSUs. Uh, it's a rear engine car. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with NSU, it's a German brand and it's it's one of the brands that Volkswagen acquired and, 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 and merged to form Audi. That was the 69 Camaro that uh, uh, finished second uh, at the race. And look, hidden between trailers, uh, Ferrari F40. Just sitting there, being cool. <laughs> Looking from the top, the space behind the boxes, full of interesting cars. I mean, everywhere you look, You'll find Jules. That's a Ferrari Dino 308. Very, very good shape. Visiting the main boxes, some of the cars that race the Young Timer Grid 2, mainly Porsche RSRs and um, BMW M3s. amazing cars and people are really racing them the way they they should 
couple of 914 6 racing cars amazing cars the boxes and the 911 ST look at the, the sticker there some people collect art we race it <laughs> yeah here we have a beautiful early 9-11 on steelies love this uh, tone of yellow and i'm not sure which model specific the 911 is in the nova mark 7 it's a british race car with a bmw four cylinder mid-engine transaxle i was curious with the position for the distributor there And a beautiful pair of uh, Alfa Romeo GTAs. This is the environment this car it is uh, supposed to be used. Look at the interior of those cars. Car, same car they use uh, the image for the event. The boxes here, Jaguar C type that did not finish the race. you see a lot of unusual stuff like this Mercedes truck that belongs to the one of the teams racing Mercedes Benz and they use that to carry all the gear and uh, probably the car as well in there maybe M1 and now a special mention to the Porsche Club Nurburgring they have memorable cars there Let's spend some time and, and show some of them. They're absolutely insane. Some of the cars they had, that first one is a black career long nose, 2.7 liter, RSR, group five, 914 couple of other long nose RSRs, 904 Carrera GTS, oh my god, Brumos Racing, this car was produced for a couple of years in the mid 60s, it's a legendary car, a uh, few versions of four, six and eight cylinders, this is a six cylinder one, Got all the details, beautiful car. The 917 wooden shift knob that was made of uh, balsa wood to save weight for race cars. Steely wheels, those are a good combination with this car. Uh, there is uh, one of one of this 904 is at the Porsche Museum with Fuchs with dip six and I think uh, the steel is their better combination career GTS all the emblems truly amazing green RSR race car 2.7 liter look at the group five Oof. Amazing. And 
they had this uh, 997 Turbo Kramer prepared and the, the car had a, an unusual shifter which I want to say it's a sequential gearbox this group they were racing several cars as well you can see from far Great example of the 190 Evolution 2.5 16 valve Cosworth engine with a curious license plate. As I learned from Anderson Dick video, the first two letters there is from the the city in Germany where the car was uh, registered, so it's not really. <laughs> in FU as you imagine but it's uh, still funny uh, Myers Manx probably also a race interesting color <laughs> BBS 1962 300SE, a car that won the Argentinian Grand Prix, the Grand Premio Internacional YPF. Uh, actually, this car won that was considered one of the toughest races in the world in the early 60s, won uh, three years in a row. Here and there you will find American cars, a beautiful example of a 71 Camaro, of course, several Cobras and ATVs all over the place. There is a 
gas station inside the track. Going back to the boxes, then this is probably the main part of the of the weekend, the classic Formula One cars. Some great examples there. Uh, Michael Schumacher, Benetton, Jean Alesi, Alan Pross, and Jack X Ferrari. And then you were there and they started Ferrari up on the right. That's a 1977 Haskett, and in front of it, Emerson Fittipaldi, Cooper Sucar.
legendary Audi Quattro. And the legendary Audi Quattro rally car. Interesting that it does have license plates so it can be driven on street. Now an early Audi from the 50s, still an auto union. It has a three-cylinder two-stroke engine with 54 horsepower. A Kramer Prepare 924. And DP Performance 911 Red Evolution. It's an RSR with a 3.5 liter engine, 370 horsepower. And a Mongol Porsches. And a Carrera 3.0. Built by a gentleman in his garage, all by himself. Very well built, nice color. Alfa Romeo 156, showing off the Musso V6. Ford Sierra Cosworth. It's a 2 liter 16 valve turbo engine. Another example of the Sierra Cosworth Mercedes 190. E30 M3. Opel Cadet C GTE. Four cylinder car. Or Steiner E30. Audi Quattro 100 Turbo. That car was really, really fast. The famous silver A4 DTM. And the Opel Cadet GSI with a 2 liter C20 XE engine. The Germans love that engine, so as Brazilians. Uh, it's very, it's a four cylinder version of the 2JZ. Very, very similar, but four cylinder. <laughs> Thank you. 
Down there is this very sweet tribute to Nelson Piquet and its BMW Brabham 